are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan Nation, hello. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Spartans, or if this is your first episode, welcome. You probably already know where this one's going to go. This is not going to be a happy episode by any means. Of course, you're going to be remembering the life of Adrian Payne, um, who he was as a human, of course, a basketball player, and then what his former teammates and coach had to say about him. We're going to go through all of that, but really quick, please rate, review, subscribe to the podcast or YouTube show. Okay, just had to bark that out there. As uncomfortable as that is, because um, let's just get right into it. Why we're all here today, why we're all listening, why we're all grieving in Spartan Nation. Adrian Payne, at the young, too young age of 31 years old, is uh, is not with us anymore. And uh, first and foremost, uh, thoughts, prayers, and comfort to Adrian's family, his friends, his former teammates, and really anyone hurting in these times right now. Of course, I'll just keep the details short. You probably already know, but... Uh, There's a suspect under arrest for first-degree murder charges after firing shots a little after 1 a.m. in Florida Sunday night, Monday morning, however you want to slice it. So uh, what can be said about it? And that's uh, really a rhetorical and non-rhetorical question because it's it's senseless, all around unnecessary, and of course beyond tragic. Um, Leaves you speechless. There's not a lot you can say, but we're going to try to piece some words together and not make sense of this because that won't ever happen probably, but at least give him the respect that he deserves here as he's gone on to uh, the other life. So I'm not going to claim to have a deep personal connection with Adrian Payne. However, I was lucky to have some interaction with him during his senior year. We had the same senior years. Of course, he was doing great things for Michigan State basketball, and I was um, a, a reporter for the state news there covering the basketball team. So in that time that I got to spend with him, it was, he was always open to talk. He was very patient with all of us, even like a young student like me, which is kind of weird because you're the same age, but still you could tell he was very patient, always answered whatever question, pretty much about anything either because it wasn't just basketball with Adrian. There was always something else going on, whether it was his toughness that we'll get to in a little bit, and of course his relationship with Lacey Holzer as well. It was all about everything outside of basketball too with Adrian. And now for the people that truly knew him, they knew that he carried that throughout life too, always being more than just basketball. He was, of course, a businessman, also had a great um, affinity for fashion too. This guy could always get an outfit off, but also, more importantly and most importantly, uh, just being a father. You know, constantly posting about his son on social media, always talking about his little boy to friends. And even Delvon Rowe highlighted this today on Twitter. Uh, he wrote, just talked to AP a couple of days ago. He was doing so good. He just couldn't stop talking about his son and how much he's enjoying basketball. Adrian was a kind soul. He didn't deserve this. Spartan Nation, let's make sure his son is taken care of. Whenever I know details about how we could help out there, um, I'll pass him along. No doubt about it, but a little early right now to see uh, if anything or what will be set up for his uh, little son. But listen, we all saw Adrian on the court and witnessed his toughness. Uh, and that's just going beyond, you know, his dominant post presence on defense. That toughness started his freshman year because if we all remember, he was diagnosed with permanent reduced lung capacity. Imagine a sport like basketball playing that with restricted lung capacity. Not great, but he did it at a high level for four years there, all the way to his senior year when he played through an ankle injury and also plantar fasciitis down the stretch, really played through a lot of pain. So, there's his toughness right there. We, we saw it day in and day out when he was wearing the green and white at Breslin Center. But also, for every ounce of toughness he carried, he also showed that in kindness and care with, of course, Lacey Holsworth, the other angel that has tragically and unfortunately left us all too soon. If you can remember that, I'm sure. Of course, you guys all do. Uh, so he was a giant on the court. We all, we all saw that. But we also saw his gentle side, too, through their relationship and giving Lacey and her family comfort down the stretch of quite literally unimaginably tough days. But it's also something that he brought to his own son, of course, in his son's, well, 
just five years of life still with us, but also has had his share of health concerns. And Adrian Payne was, as from all accounts, as as there, as present as a father as he could have been, which is tough considering his basketball career has taken him all around the globe. Even for a second, he stopped his basketball career to be by his son's side when he was going through medical procedures. Tried to give the kid the world, right? I you, you see all the pictures. I mean, last July, if you want, if you want to be just incredibly heartbroken, and also realize how happy Adrian was as a father, how there he was for his child. Go on his Facebook page and scroll back a little bit. It, it is picture after picture of him and his son, and it's heartbreaking knowing what we know now of what happened. Like last July, it's him and his little son at Disney World. Caption: Time you can't get back. And well-spent memories we make. And just before that, last Father's Day, he writes, the best Father's Day is every day I get to spend with him. He loved the kid. And unfortunately, this tragedy is yeah, it's going to change everything. Um, it's terrible. There's nothing else you can say about it. There's nothing you can say to make sense about it. But what a 31 years here. And he impacted a lot of people. From people he really didn't probably know at the start in the Holsworth family, people that he inspired through that story outside of people he maybe even met, just people that watched his story on TV, write about it online, and also impacted the people as close as you could possibly get, of course, with his own son. So yeah, tough to talk about that without just bawling your eyes out for about 15 straight minutes, but um, we're going to try to hold it together a little longer. So yeah, we remember Adrian Payne, the basketball player, and we'll get to that in a little bit, everything he did on the court. But we just have to start this with remembering him as the man, teammate, the comforter, and most importantly, the thing he seemingly loved the most, being a father. So we have to remember all that before we go any further. Adrian Payne, I rest in peace. And yeah, I, if there's anything we could do to bring comfort to anyone, to family, I would love to know. But for now, all we could do is just talk about him, remember him, and we will get to that. Uh, we'll talk about the basketball side of things here in a hot second. Um, but yeah, no good segue for this. If you're listening to the podcast, just have to do a few ads. Or if you're on YouTube, we will jump right into it right now. So let's talk about Adrian Payne, the basketball player. The the six foot ten, I swear he's listed at six foot ten in the roster, but I swear he was seven foot ten. This is one of the largest humans I've ever seen. I, I would have to shout my questions to him as I'm standing at my Five foot eight and a half frame. Um, but like I said, he, he was very patient. He was very open, very insightful too. Of course, by the end of his senior year, really got used to talking. But he also got used to playing the game a lot earlier, right? Uh, let's just go through some of the records that he had. Record for most points in an NCAA tournament game, dropping 41 points in that opening round against Delaware back 2014. Uh, he's just one of 52 Spartans to score more than 1,000 points ranking 32nd overall in MSU program history with 1,032 points. He is sixth all-time in blocks at MSU with 141, and of course, two-time second-team All-Big Ten player. Now, back to the beginning, this was no picnic for uh, for Izzo to get Payne onto campus because this was a coveted recruit out of high school. Uh, AP, he was a five-star player out of Dayton, of course, the, the old folklore goes that uh, John Calipari from Kentucky wanted to really impress the kid, so he flew a helicopter to his high school, landed it right there to try to make a great first impression on John Cal or on Adrian Payne. But alas, he made his way to East Lansing, played uh, in 34 games as a freshman, but really started to come into his own in his sophomore year, averaging seven points and a block per game his sophomore year. Now, the real AP, the, the one that we will always remember on the court, started to really come out his junior year. And what I mean by that is his three-point shot really started to work its way into his game. That same three-point shot that Tom Izzo used to roll his eyes about, or he was asked about it, uh, it was getting dialed in. And, oh, man, uh, by junior year, by the middle of the season, end of the season, AP was one of the most dangerous big men in the conference, if not, like, the entire nation. This whole revolution with basketball about a versatile big man, a unicorn, if you will. AP was kind of the early one of those in college basketball. And it also reflected, too, where he got drafted. But before we get there, 
let's talk about what happened those last two years. He averaged 10 points his junior year, 16 points his senior year, all while shooting a combined 40% from three in those last two years. Add in seven rebounds per game, and yeah, it, it is no wonder he was that two-time second-team All-Big Ten player that he was. Monster end. Monster end to his senior season. He had a laundry list of incredible games at Michigan State down the stretch to end his career. And that, let's start with uh, his 18 points, 9 rebounds, in the Big Ten tournament title win over Michigan. And, oh yeah, just right after that, the following game, that 41-point performance that we already talked about against Delaware to kick off the NCAA tournament. And also, this was a great game too. Amazing game at Madison Square Garden. Sweet 16, number one Virginia against four-seeded Michigan State. This was the game of the tournament. And AP, he showed up like he did in many big games. You could always count on pain to arrive when the situation was the biggest. He added 16 points. Not only that, but a late go-ahead three-pointer with about a minute 20 left to put Virginia away was a close game. Back and forth all day at the top of the key, top of the arc. Pure, pure from three-point land. Just as we all expected him to be, right? Just as Izzo probably expected him to be uh, as a freshman as he came onto campus. Uh, Of course, I'm kidding, but that three-point shot is what made Adrian Payne who he was on the offensive side and on defensive side. Hey, you don't get yourself in the top 10 uh, blocks category in a program as illustrious as Michigan State without being a menace like Adrian Payne. But it also wasn't just the end of his senior season. His entire senior season was littered with just incredible performances, like 23 points on the road in a win against Purdue. We know how rare it is to get road wins at Purdue. AEP made sure he locked one up with 23 points a little before that. 20 points, 14 points against Northwestern. A 33-point game in a walloping. A walloping over Texas at the early part of the season. And, of course, the earliest part of the season to kick off the 2013-2014 campaign Champions Classic, United Center, number two MSU versus number one Kentucky. AP with a casual, a casual 15 points in that performance to help give MSU the win there. We all have incredible memories of many Michigan State players, and duh, AP is one of those players that you're going to have some good memories of, just like that three-pointer against uh, Virginia, the 41 points against Delaware. But my personal AP memory for him playing, and this is a question that you know is asked all the time, not just to me, but to any state fan. Like, oh, what's the loudest you've ever heard Spartan Stadium? Or what's the loudest you've heard Breslin Center? My answer is always this. It was his sophomore year. They're playing Michigan at home in 2012. And it's three minutes into the game. Not a lot of scoring going on, but a lot of turnovers are going on for Michigan. And they come late in the shot clock. They try to take Adrian Payne ISO. We all know how this one ends. Uh, AP swats this guy's shot. And I was second row of the zone. Breslin Center got so loud. I was screaming as loud as I physically could. And I, I couldn't even hear myself. That's how loud Breslin Center was. And it was all off this AP block. And MSU goes on to win. I believe it was by 10 points, like 64, 54, some low-scoring game like that. But, yeah, AP is always going to be, personally, the the, the reason um, or the answer to the question, what's the loudest you've ever heard Breslin Center? So I'd love to hear any AP memories you have, any AP stories you have. Um, Shout it out on Twitter. I'll be sure to retweet it, uh, Sheehan underscore sports. Or right here, if you're watching on YouTube, drop it down in the comments. Um, Yeah, because this is a – as good of a time as ever to, to rehash some great memories of a great player, an awesome player, a player that went on to be drafted at 15 overall to the Atlanta Hawks playing there for two seasons, went up to Minnesota, played there for three seasons. And then one season in Orlando before taking his professional career, like all over the globe. Like when you say all over the globe, yeah, Greece, France, China, Lithuania, Turkey. And that includes a 2018 season at Panathinaikos. That's right, Panathinaikos over in Greece, which was, of course, coached by Rick Pitino at the time. AP helped that team achieve a illustrious, an illustrious 26-0 season over in Greece. So 
yes, even after the NBA still went on to do great things overseas. Um, and yeah, of course, just like I mentioned earlier, um, sometimes he had to take a step away, be by his son. But yeah, it was a career that was still ongoing, always kept himself in good shape, basketball playing condition. And yeah, so that's that's the basketball story of Adrian Payne. And there's plenty more to talk about, plenty more of people to hear from. We'll get into that next segment. There is absolutely no good segue to this right now at all. Um, but i got to pay the bills really quick. BetOnline.net. Our partners at BetOnline.net continue to be the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info from all the latest odds, news, sports development, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even the next NFL futures. NFL, sorry, BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting, playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends in action. That is at BetOnline, where the game starts. First and foremost, uh, let's start with uh, Tom Izzo. He, of course, came out with a statement late Monday, and take all the time you need for that one. Is it? I, I can't imagine what any of these guys are going through. Former coaches, former players. We'll get to some tweets that um, were sent out, but a good amount of them were simply just rest in peace or the broken heart emoji or the dove emoji because what can you say? I, I don't. I don't blame any of these guys for being at a loss for words here, but some did have words to say. And Izzo, he had a lot to say here. Uh, He says, quote, I'm in shock at the tragic news of Adrian Payne's death. Our players, our prayers are with his family, teammates, and loved ones. Adrian was loved by his teammates and coaches who respected his development as a player and a person. He came to Michigan state with a ton of raw talent. Got that right. And put it in the work to reach the goal of becoming an NBA player. Also bang on there. Beyond that, He will long be remembered by Spartan fans for his kind heart and his friendship and genuine bond with Lacey Holdsworth that touched the nation. Today is a difficult and sad day for the Spartan basketball family. Following graduation, Adrian regularly regularly returned to East Lansing. In doing so, he developed and strengthened relationships with the players from all eras. I've heard many of those players today, even ones experiencing heartbreak, and each one with their own fond memory of, of Adrian. So that's what Izzo had to say right there, very nice touch on everything there from his relationship with players. And we saw that last month. Uh, there was a group of players that came, I believe it was a month, maybe two months ago, and he was one of those guys. And it seemed that he, just like Izzo said, would visit campus as often as he could. Tough when you're an overseas basketball player. Tough when you've got a family back home. But, yeah, he would come up to East Lansing quite often. So that's that's what Izzo had to say. Um, Magic Johnson. Uh, says, or on Twitter, tweeted, rather, Cookie and I are heartbroken to hear that former Spartan Adrian Payne has passed away. Our prayers and thoughts are with his family and Spartan Nation. Adrian will be sorely missed. And it it goes from current players, like obviously not on the team anymore, but even Rocket Watts uh, tweets out, wow, rest up AP uh, with the heart emoji. Current player Jaden Akins, rest in peace AP, you will be missed. These guys are hurting, and it's, it's not just his former teammates. It's the current guys. It's everyone from different eras just like Izzo touched on. Former teammate Brandon Dawson tweeted out, uh, thankful for the memories and battles we shared forever, a brotherhood, rest up Spartan dog. And battles we shared, that could be, uh, hey, we we all know the story. They had a little tiff. Uh, I believe it was before Nike at Penn State, but the next words right after that, forever brotherhood. Brothers fight, man. That happens. And yeah, Brandon definitely missing his old teammate, AP, stunned by the news, just like, uh, you know, Delvin Rowe. Uh, We already... Went through his tweet right there talking about how much he would talk about his son and everything like that. And uh, it's tough. I, just like, the, you know, Gary Harris, AP5, dove emoji, heart emoji. Uh, Valentine writes, rest in peace, AP, Spartan dog legend. It's You got to be short on words here sometimes because yeah, it's it's got to be jarring for these players. Um, and for – actually, no, there's two more that I want to go through. Uh, Brandon Wood. He put uh, a picture out there on Twitter with him. My brother, my roommate, my teammate, one of my closest boys while at state. I'm just glad I heard you out and we had that good talk last month. Love you, broken heart emoji. And then Nick Ward, AP is a Michigan State legend. One of those reasons I wanted to play in green and white, watching him and Jared Solinger go at it. Yeah, it's um, it's tough. But those, yeah, those are the reactions of the players. I thought it'd be important to include those. No doubt. Again, 
I'm just like you. I'm a fan. Uh, I have my own memories of AP, but it's definitely nice to hear from the guys that went to war with him every single day. We're at those team dinners with him, shared the locker room with him, I went to parties together, all, all that good stuff. Stayed in contact even after their playing days at Michigan State. That's always nice to hear like stuff like what Brandon Wood was saying, what Delvin Rose saying that you know he did keep in touch with these guys. And of course, what Ezo talked about, always return to Michigan State. And it, it it's horrible that this, these are always the kind of moments that make you realize this, but reach out to that person you haven't talked to in a while that you're missing out from. And it's uh, it might be tough, might be awkward, but hey, I bet you won't regret it, though. And I know that these guys aren't regretting these conversations they've had late with Adrian Payne, and hopefully that could bring them some sort of comfort. But until, yeah, I don't even know what else to say. Not listening, guys. Um, I This probably was not fun <laughs> to listen to, not easy to listen to. Um, hopefully we did a somewhat of a good job here because – Never easy to talk about tragedy. Um, again, if you have any stories you want to share, any memories, reach out. We'll we'll bring them to the rest of the world too. We might read some tomorrow um, because yeah, we we will be back tomorrow. Of course, we'll talk about the MSU hockey coach hiring. Anything else from the Adrian Payne uh, news that's happened? And yeah, we'll be back. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for for listening, for spending some of your time listening to the show, remembering Adrian Payne. God bless. Thoughts and prayers to to everyone out there from Spartan Nation to his own family. So take it easy, guy. Love you all.